Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of the Chasing Goals podcast. You're here with Nugget, as always. Super exciting to have Rachel on the podcast today. How are you going? Hello. Good, good. good. Not bad. How are you? Yes, very, very good. Super excited to to get into it and um, have a chat of kind of what you're doing. Um, obviously, dive into some strength stuff, some training, your business and that sort of thing. But can you kind of maybe touch on and let everyone know kind of what you do, where you're from, all that sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so I'm from, I'm from Scotland originally. Um, so a small, small town in Scotland, uh, but I now live in, now live in England. Yep. Um, another commercial gym down here um so i've been a pt for five years almost five years um i was an architect before that oh. <laughs> so that's a fun, <laughs> that's a fun change yeah um, i tend to focus on like strength training with clients more motivational yeah. kind of training confidence building um i've got some clients that have delved into the powerlifting world in the past two yeah, years nice. post COVID. Um yeah. so I've got a couple of clients now that are focusing more on that, which is quite fun. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I'll try try and persuade them to do some competitions as well. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah I'm based based down in um a gym in England now. Um and train clients from here, but I still have all my Glasgow clients as well, um from from back in Scotland. So so it's yeah, pretty good. Awesome. So I'm doing that online and one to one in here. Yeah. So is that is that online with the the people back in Scotland? Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of them just stayed with me. Uh, they'd all trained with me for pretty yeah. much since the time I started. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, yeah, it's good to have them because they've been with me like three years. Some of them four years, even longer. So um. Yeah, it's nice to have that, and and that's a great relationship, which I feel like that's really important. And, yeah. For sure, or should be in any sort of PT. Yeah, you'd hope so. You'd hope you'd like to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's, it's a trust thing. So yeah, they they all trust me to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> stuff, and I trust to them to tell me the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's great to have them. It's like a nice little piece of home as well. Yeah, for sure. What well, that? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'll um. There's a couple of things to touch on, but what kind of made you um that make the switch from obviously architect and um like to personal training and was there like a because i feel i was talking to someone else about this was there a overlap when you were doing both or was it straight i'm swapping and it went and you dove straight in how did that kind of all pan out hey uh, hopefully hopefully my old boss isn't watching this <laughs> <laughs> i'll tag him uh, what's was, his insta uh, i'll tag him Overlap in terms of I was studying for my PT qualification during my lunch breaks when I worked in architecture. <laughs> um, I, honestly, I just I just really did not enjoy working in architecture like no. at all. Um, I love the people I worked with. I'm still good friends with some of them, but I just I, I felt like it was underpaid and like over stressful. Yeah, for sure. Well, I feel like that's. And if it's not something you're passionate about and you don't love it, you know, well, I think um, for me, uh, obviously fitness and that sort of thing, and it's not really, it doesn't feel like a job, does it? It just kind of, fit, it's it's fun, you know? And that's kind of, I think, a good kind of thing. But if, you're something, if you're passionate about something, you should try and try and chase it. Even if it takes, that's why I ask the question, because even if it takes a little bit of time to overlap your job and you start it as like a side hustle and then eventually build it up where you can transition um but yeah no, that's that's awesome so yeah, i'm I, pretty much like a an all-in person so yeah. I, <laughs> I handed in my notice and like my architecture <laughs> job and then i didn't even have a pt job at that point i was just like nah sack this i'm not doing it and, <laughs> and then, yeah, i guess so, yeah then i just walked into a job in my old gym um which is great <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was about to say so how did you kind of obviously start off your journey because i i feel like that could be probably the hardest period for a personal training, especially well for me, I, I didn't go the traditional route. I didn't go through, um, yeah. go into like a PT gym. I just started at a studio that my mate kind of had. Um, how did you get a go about, I guess, gaining those first few clients and, and that sort of thing? Um, so getting my job, I trained with a girl that worked in the 
gym I ended up working in. Um, or rather, she trained me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, said to her, yeah, I'm doing my doing my PT qualification. Blah, blah, blah. She was like, oh, I'll introduce you to my manager. I was yeah. like, oh, okay. This was at the end of a workout, so I yeah. look horrible. <laughs> like, I'm sweaty. I've yeah, got a big yeah. bag of water on. My hair's, like, sticking to my face. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I just walk, like, literally walk into the office. She introduces me, and, yeah, he asked me to come in for an interview, like, the next day or the next couple of days. And then, yeah, just got the job. I literally walked into a job. Yeah. Like, without <laughs> <laughs> I was extremely lucky to yeah. just follow that. Um. And yeah, he he was a great manager. So I feel I had a I had a a lot of guidance from the very start because he was quite hands on. Yeah, that's good. Um, and I was very shy to begin with. Yeah, he would try and like push me out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like, I... try and get me to do things out of my comfort zone, which I still hate doing. Yeah, <laughs> was that kind of just like uh like going around the floor talking to people that sort of stuff is that is that what you mean by that or is that kind of something else? So I, got, I got a lot of clients from classes or okay. I, I, I always get a lot of clients from doing classes yeah um so i was working for the gym for uh 15 hours initially yeah okay um so i was taking classes for them and i yeah i got a lot of clients from there and, <laughs> and that's 10 that tends to be my my thing because yeah. <laughs> as soon as I came into this gym everyone was like you've stole everyone from the classes I'm like well that's what I do <laughs> that's my thing yeah so yeah they, they were a good exposure yeah for um, sure so yeah that was great just to be out there you're in front of 20-30 people yeah and kind of trying to control the class and yeah yeah um, yeah that's awesome and then I guess when they kind of swing from being a like a group, because obviously you, you can't get that much one on one time if there's 20, 30 people there, and then they come to one on one, what's your kind of uh, process at the start of your, like, so they, they've come in maybe their first session. What's your process to kind of get them to start lifting and doing everything properly? And do you, do you have that uh, sort of like process? Uh, yeah, I always like, get them in for a casual <coughs> chat first before yep. anything even happens <laughs> um, and get like get a good history and what they've done because you can get a good idea this is why like getting clients from classes is great because you already know how they move yeah you already know what they're really like struggling with and you already know what they're strong with so you've yeah, got exactly. a good idea already yeah um, so yeah from there yeah just talking to them really casually and getting a feel for what what they like and how hard they want to push obviously what their goals are um and honestly from there i'll i'll write up a first program and we'll go through it and if there's stuff they don't like i'm like cool we'll immediately take it off because like my main aim for them first is just to come and do stuff themselves and especially i I find out i get a lot of girls that aren't confident like going and doing their own thing or just scared of the weights area because it's yeah, still yeah. pretty male dominated um so yeah my, my first kind of point of call if it's a female obviously is just making them feel comfortable and confident yeah whatever sure. so we'll change things like as we go like, yeah we need to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> every, no. day, every week and yeah to, until they're like happy of going okay i can run with this yeah i, I like this workout um so yeah, that's like the first main thing for me is just making sure they're happy and confident doing it themselves. Yeah, and I feel like that's probably a, a big thing. Like um, the initial kind of, if it's your first, like you're, you're very new to going to the gym and stuff, it can be a bit daunting where there's so many people and that sort of thing. So um, I guess that's, that's, that's probably why it's not only to kind of get the correct techniques and that sort of thing, but to kind of build confidence in your lifts and um, kind of learn a little bit about what you're doing rather than just doing something just because you're doing it type thing. Um, <laughs> but then, and then, and then, you get clients like that that don't care. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's like, I just want to be skinny. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't, just... they don't care what they do. And that's fine as well. Yeah. That's fine. Well, and that, that's another thing. It could be they could have, you know, stressful, stressful lives like, and that's what they just want to come. They might be 
managing all, all the time their stone stuff. They just want to come to the gym, not think about it, do what you say and leave. Um, Sweat yeah. So, um, and then I guess what kind of, um, so, so you've obviously got your, the, the person in and that sort of thing. How are you kind of breaking it down? Do, do you recommend them come to you a certain amount of times or do you give them a, a program where they might come to you once or twice and do it by themselves once or twice? How's that all kind of work and how do you work with your clients? So like when, when we have like an initial chat, I'll look at, yeah, what they do for a living, how busy their schedule is, do they have kids, do they work night shift, are they a nurse, like all those sort of things. Um, cause sometimes it's just not realistic for someone to come like more than once. Sometimes they're well up for coming. I've had clients have three, four sessions a week and that suits them. Uh, but it's not always, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, we, we decide together. Yeah. Like everything's really a bit of a joint decision at that point until I tell them to do like burpees. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all my decisions there. Um, and yeah, from from there, they'll have a program. So I now use an app to do all like, my programs and have all my clients on that one space. Yeah. Um, before that, you just Google Sheets. But yeah, they'll always have a program. Um, so if they're coming in once or twice, we'll agree what we're going to do. Yeah. In advance. And then... Yeah, ideally they'll do the other days. But to begin with, I'll run through everything on their program with them. Especially yeah. if they're new. If they're more experienced, obviously they can they can run with it. Yeah. Um but yeah, I'll I'll make sure like they know everything on there. Um the app I've got now obviously like technology that has videos for everything. So people are more <laughs> likely to just go and try it, which is great. Um before when I just use sheets, people are like, What does that mean? Yeah. Google Sheets. <laughs> um, yeah, it's good. And then I guess are your with the clients that do one a week compared to your clients that do maybe four, is it quite a different kind of setup in the how they run, or is it a similar, like the? Yeah, I'll be a lot more relaxed with someone that's coming in four times a week <laughs> than if someone's coming in once. Yeah. Getting- okay. Yeah, they're getting it tough. <laughs> um, but also, I just want like I want to use if they've only got that one hour. I mean, obviously, I see them in the gym, so I can like do my clients around when I was training earlier, and I kept going and like fix some stuff, and I was like, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> like they just want left alone just now. Um, but yeah, obviously, like using that hour as much as we can to just iron out everything. Um, well, that's questions they've got, technique stuff, and yeah, just pushing them. Um, yeah, yeah, we're coming in more than once. I'm a bit nicer. I don't know if my clients would say that, but yeah. I, I think I'm a bit nicer. <laughs> you feel you're a bit nicer, but they don't. They don't. <laughs> you like you should say. Uh, I know my client that I had earlier will watch this, and he'll be sitting there going, "No, you're not." <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're, like, you're lucky you come here twice or three times you should see me if you came here once <laughs> um and then i guess with the as you're saying you've progressed to a few of the clients with your with to power lifting and that sort of stuff obviously they, they're probably coming a, a few more times how are you structuring their kind of programs um and what are you looking for with them are you um like, are you looking at weaknesses or are you just focusing on the big lifts? How, how does it kind of work and how would you structure their programs? Yeah, both things, both looking at, yeah, the big lifts and then where they need to improve, um, yeah, and where their weak spots are. Um, a lot of the clients that have ended up yeah, yeah. doing powerlifting stuff with me did not start for that reason. They've just ended up enjoying that. Yeah. And, like, I've I've only done like one meet, but they like they were all quite motivated by that and were like, Oh yeah, let's let's push this. Yeah. Um so they all started off with something way different. So they're all quite like well conditioned and already have really good technique to begin with, which is yeah. great. Um I always do all their programs on sheets because Matt doesn't let me put in percentages. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so confusing. Um, so that's always easier. Um, so I always have formulas set up, which is yeah, 
Um, yeah, I've done so many different things with people. It is up to what their strong points are and where their weaknesses are, but we'll always keep like their main lifts in. Yeah, for and sure. Then, like accessories will maybe change every yeah. two weeks if they need to, um, just to iron out like weaknesses. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and with the um, so with percentages and that sort of thing, how do you kind of um? Is there like a basic formula you would use? Let's say doing eight reps. Is there a formula you would use, like a general formula for everyone, or do you find that some people do better with he- like higher reps so they can go a bit higher on percentage? Or how does it, that kind of work in regards to yeah percentages? Yeah, I feel I need to change everyone's. People might disagree with that, but like everyone's different. I agree. Um, <laughs> like one of my clients were in, yeah, he was an air there, and um, he was just doing as many reps as he could. Yeah. On um, what was he doing? Block pulls. Um, was it? And I, he was doing block pulls. Okay, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Whatever you want to call them. Yeah, that's same deal. Yeah, I know that. I know the ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, I don't know. Like, I've got him in the mirror and I was like, oh, he's probably doing going to do like three. I think it was like 170 kilograms or something. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, he's probably going to do three. And then I looked around a minute later. I was just doing like lateral raises. I looked around and he was still going. And I was like, do you know, immediately in my head, I'm going, I need to change your program. Because <laughs> he managed 10. And I was 10. like, yeah, you really weren't meant to manage 10. <laughs> so That's like, crazy. like, yeah, he'll end up going into his program and it'll change next week. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, like, I do feel like I need to change people's more regularly if they just hit, um, hit certain targets. Yeah, for sure. Then That's- we'll adjust it the next week. Um, yeah, I'll I'll alter it for a person. Um, sometimes I will just tell them, yeah, do an AMRAP. Uh, I think he was working at, that was like 75%. Yep. So he was doing an AMRAP on that. Yeah, okay. Um, so I find that that's a good way, actually, to just really test people to their limits and do a proper test of, like, 6 rep max, 8 rep max, 10 yeah, rep max. Sure. Because people will do 10 reps and they'll still have five in the tank. Like, it's not your 10 rep max. No, exactly, yeah. Unless you that bar's not coming up. He was, he was dying. <laughs> that, was like, yeah. that was like an actual 10 rep max. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But that's, that's great because we can use that. So I've, I've done that with a few clients this week, actually. Just 10 rep maxes on um, different movements. Yeah. With in their sessions, just to try and push them to feel that sort For of sure. level of fatigue. What? Um, uh, that's difficult for people to experience if they're just training by themselves all the time. For sure. That's what I was about to say. I, I feel that's kind of one thing you need to kind of, I think you need to learn when you're kind of just kind of getting into the gym, that sort of thing, is what it feels like to actually go to your max so that when you are like doing a, you know, like RPE of eight or RPE of seven, you can't actually kind of have a gauge of what, where you're actually at. Um, because there's, there's a lot of times, especially if you're doing, <clears throat> I feel like if you're doing a higher rep type stuff, if you do, you know, you're doing like 18 to 20 on like you know tricep pull down, whatever you're doing, that it's it's kind of um, you feel like you're done, but really you could probably get three or four more out. Um, so I feel like doing different maxes, but like at different rep ranges, it kind of gives people a, a better kind of feeling and a better better knowledge of where they're actually at so they can kind of stick their program a bit better and maybe not cheat themselves, but not just be like, yeah, that was a eight, but really it was a six or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, like a <laughs> <laughs> For sure. That's like, I feel like your mentality, though, comes into that a lot. Because, like, I was, I was training earlier and, my, like, my coach was, I'm on a deload this week, so my coach was like, you can do an extra day if you want like bodybuilding style upper body whatever you want so i was like obviously i'm gonna do that <laughs> <laughs> i was in triceps and i was like do you know what i can't actually be bothered <laughs> so i was like yeah this is really sore i'll stop now yeah and i was like not even close to failure not well, even that, close. 
Oh, that's, that's like mental fatigue. Really. Yeah, oh, that's, and that's what I think. I'm um I'm actually deloading this week as well. Um, but what um what are your what's your kind of um philosophy on? I was speaking to someone about this the other day. Like, what? How do you go about a deload week? Um, before I started, um, with the coach I've currently got, uh, I honestly used to just half my sets. Yeah. I'd just half my sets because I'd be like, no. Nah. Um, and do you know what? It's never not worked for me. Mm. Like, it's always been okay. Like, yeah. I, I did the same thing before my powerlifting meet in May. Yeah. And it was, it was grand. <laughs> Um, I I think it's important now. Now my uh, program changes every week. Um, so my coach is in charge of whatever I do. Yeah. Uh, which he likes way too much. <laughs> <laughs> every time I tell him I hate squats, I expect them to disappear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing four squats this week. Yeah, four sets. Of- <laughs> um, so yeah, it's much much lighter, higher reps. Um, that I'm on this week. Yeah. Um. Obviously, the weight goes down as well. Less sets of stuff. So instead of five sets, there's maybe three. Yeah. I got, I got to do one set of deadlifts. <laughs> <laughs> do you and do you feel? Because I, I I kind of I'm in that that same sort of ballpark. I don't really um have a like I wouldn't even do like half. I might not even do half. I just like want to get to the gym, so I keep that kind of routine of getting yeah. to the gym. Um, yeah. but I'm like, you know, if I do. One and a half sets. I'm like, eh, that'll do. <laughs> but at least I'm still. But I feel like it is a more, um, as well as physical. I feel like it's definitely more of a mental break as well. Um, yeah, it, yeah. Is that? Do you feel like? Do you feel that? Yeah, it was getting to the point where I was getting annoyed with myself at little things. So he was like, "Think it's time for it's time for a deal." And I mean, usually I'll be training for like two. Hours. Two hours probably. Yeah, or yeah, okay. Hours. Um, and like yeah, tonight I was done in like forty minutes. That's perfect. I don't. I don't even think my leg session took that long. So do you know, like just that. So you're still coming in. Yeah. Getting to like get a bit of a sweat on, get a bit mm-hmm. of a pump on, but it saves you a lot of time as well. So like that mental exhaustion is now well, it's quarter. It's not even half. For so sure. Probably doing legs instead of two hours. Yeah, so yeah, it doesn't. It does get mentally draining as well. Well, I think that kind of um, and that's a good. It's a good thing about it is like when you're kind of at the end of whatever you're doing, um, you're obviously just like kind of grinding and you're you're mentally just exhausted. So you take that week off or whatever it is, and then the, when you come back that following Monday, you're like, e or whatever. Whenever you kind of come back. You're eager and you're you're like chomping at the bit to kind of get it back into it. Do you know the the best week I ever had training was the week after I had COVID. Because <laughs> you were just ready to go. <laughs> yeah, I was like, great, we're going in. We had some PBs. Probably shouldn't have done that, but it's fine. But that was just because I couldn't leave the house. Like I yeah. literally wasn't allowed to. Mm-hmm. So yeah, by the time I could, I was like, this is great. <laughs> Um, that's great. It's so, it's so true. There's nothing worse being stuck at home. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm very restless, so I always need to do something. I always need to be busy. Mm. Um, wh- while we're on, um, like obviously your training that sort of stuff. Do you want to kind of run through what you're doing with your training at the moment, and kind of maybe some of your goals and what your yeah what you're doing and where you're kind of pointing your training at the moment? Um, so I was, um, I was. Um, trained myself for probably the past two years. Yeah, post COVID more or less. Yeah. Um and did a powerlift and meet other side of England. <laughs> I'm like over here. Over <laughs> here. Uh just found a powerlift and meet where I didn't really need to qualify with like any requirements at all. Yeah. Um came second, which is great. <laughs> Um, so okay. and that, like that was my first experience. I've never actually even been to one to watch. Yeah, so I didn't know what to expect or so. So that was like my first experience there. It was good. Like the environment was great. Um, I got um, my coach will not mind me saying this, but 
<laughs> I got really pissed off because he failed my deadlift. Yeah, okay. Because I, because I slammed it. And I, I, like, I held that against him. So he was not my coach at this point. <laughs> you, so, so what did you do? You sl- you What did you do? You sl- what's a slam that mean? Drop like you dropped it on the ground? Uh, I didn't drop it. I just got a bit excited. Yeah, yeah. And that doesn't, and that, so, yeah, yeah, kind of. So you have to control the, so you have to control the lift all the way up and all the way down. Yeah, so your hands still need to be in the bar when it's on the ground. Okay, okay. So I think I was a bit, mm. <laughs> a bit abrupt. We'll see yeah, yeah, I, just a bit excited. <laughs> I'll say, I'll send you the video and you'll understand. <laughs> I look like a maniac. Oh, do you have it? Is it up on your uh, Instagram? I'll have a look at it. Yeah, yeah, it's on my Instagram. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, <laughs> yeah, after that, I think I'd, I'd got a picture of my coach who owned the gym where the comp was. Um, so, like, me and him outside with my medal, uh, tagged it. And then, yeah, we just started speaking. And then I was like, when when I can afford it, like, I'll I'll probably get you to coach me. Um, so he's actually been doing it for free for a couple of months for me. Um, oh, no good. Great. Well, <laughs> Um, so like, yeah, that, that money's coming. <laughs> oh, <it is>. yeah. <laughs> Money, Andy's hosting a uh, comp at his gym on the 11th of December, so he needs brownies <laughs> money. <laughs> That's why I'm sick. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's been coaching me for the past three months, three months, four months. Yeah, um, awesome. So, yeah, he's completely in charge because I want to do more competitions. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna enter um a qualifier on April the first. Okay. Um, it's near him. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'll do well in that. But that's like the the main goal right now. Yeah. Um. Awesome. To get there. My my lifts aren't quite there, but I'll chip away at them. Yeah, for sure. And how does that kind of work? I I kind of want to touch on a few things there. Maybe like where you're looking at. And how are you going to structure your program moving forward into the that lift? But how did you kind of structure it into the the first one? Did you have like a was there like a season or you, you know was it eight weeks preparation, ten weeks? How did it kind of work? I just remember what I did now. <laughs> I ran three six week blocks, so I started the first one like pretty high volume. Um, because my conditioning was dreadful so like my lift would be fine but I couldn't breathe (laughs) so that's great (laughs) so yeah I ran that for well four weeks deloaded did a test week um and then literally just reduced the intensity yeah did that for four weeks deload test week and then the final block was just me like testing my lifts and actually getting happy with them yeah um so keeping them like kind of 90% um, training max and just getting comfy with them. Bench has always been a bit, it's not shit, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not It's not going to get me any medals. So like, yeah, okay. So that's the that's like, the one. Where I was like, I actually just need to get confident with that. Yeah. Um, my deadlift's always been really good, so it was less of a sort of struggle um, with that. So, yeah, I was more like just doing like, three reps, two reps, one reps in that last block of each lift and tapering it down. Um, so yeah, that was before that and then, yeah, comp went well. I had a few hissy fits before but it's okay. <laughs> 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 I might have cried in the gym a few times but that's normal. <laughs> yeah, so with your um, with your training, so was it four weeks kind of on, one week off, four weeks on, one? is that kind of how you Structured it roughly. Four weeks on, one week deloading. Yeah. Off. One week like a test week, so it was yeah. pretty like a chill week. So it was more like two really chill weeks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One again. Um, I honestly just didn't. I just didn't want to injure myself. Yeah. Um, sure. I've like I've badly injured my hip flexor before, so it's always like in the in back, the back of my head. Yeah. So yeah, that was the main thing. I was just trying to keep it chill really <laughs> and not get ahead of myself because I do yeah. that quite a lot <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure and then I guess moving moving forward so into this kind of so what April you say April that probably gives you maybe like five months is it maybe yeah. um five and a half maybe 
what's the kind of plan? Do you do you change it in the fact where you like? Is it a lot of hypertrophy stuff, or is it still just a lot of like strength work with accessories? How does that kind of work? Or do you have you have you spoke have you? I've done a mixture of both, really. Yep. Um, so like one week, um, my leg stuff will be strength, macro body will be hypertrophy, and then it'll just switch and switch. Yeah. Okay. And switch. Yeah. Um, and then we'll have like tester weeks in there before like one lift at a time usually. Yeah. So it'll be like tester for squat one week. Next week will be bench. Next week will be deadlift. So it's it's all kind of split up just now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what he has planned running into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'll listen see. <laughs> um, yeah, as long as like my main thing is like go and enjoy it. Yeah, really. for sure. Um, I'm probably sitting like forty kilograms off the total that I would need to qualify. Um, I... so I, I like if I don't get that, I'm not gonna be pissed off like. I don't expect to pull 40 out of somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if everything's good, like, I just get used to that environment. Um, yeah. That's probably more important for me, like, this time around. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. like, the meet I did in his gym was really small and, like, quite personal and everyone, like, was getting to know each other and making friends and it was <laughs> nice thing. And I'm sure it's not like that normally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but- yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd just like to go experience a, a like proper powerlifting competition. Yeah, and um, yeah, just just do my best, really. See like, how it goes. Do you have like obviously in power? I've had a few couple of powerlifters on, and is it are you in like a certain weight class? Like, or do you have to? So, are you dieting, and how how does that all kind of work for you? Um, just now I'm sitting at like sixty five kilos. Ideally, I'd go in under 63. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, we'd, we'd have to tie it, but sadly. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, I was speaking to someone. Do you... Yeah, it's not really my strong suit. So I used to I used to have an eating disorder for about yeah. 10 years. Um, So, like, I try and avoid that. Like, avoid dieting. Yeah, all. for sure, yeah. Because I'll then, like maybe get too restrictive or I'll get really addicted to like one thing so it can no. be a slippery slope yeah yeah <laughs> um so for my last pump I literally was what we call good I didn't eat chocolate for a week <laughs> I didn't snack for a week and I fasted the day before my competition oh yeah I, I managed probably to drop yeah like three kilograms three and a half kilograms oh okay nice we do did you do some water cutting as well not at all. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I was just talking. Talk- <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. how how long did you get <clears throat> after you let's say you weigh in? How long until you go on this? The, like, how long's the turnover until you well, lift? This one marks in April, um, but weigh in was uh eight eight a.m. Yep. Yeah, half an eight. And then, like, first warm up wasn't until ten a.m. Okay, so after that weigh-in, were you eating stacks of food? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. I was staying at the hotel, like next to the gym. Yeah, okay. So I went back to the hotel, paid extra for breakfast, and had like four breakfasts. <laughs> and then I had a huge like carrier bag full of like snacks and fruit and energy, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. So yeah, I just. <laughs> I think I ate all like all day. I don't think there was probably half an hour where I didn't have. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So yeah, yeah, I ate a lot at breakfast. Like people were looking at me. Like yeah. <laughs> uh, why is she eating so much food? <laughs> That's her third so, go. Yeah, I ate a lot. I was starving, and I was turning into a bit of a maniac by that point. So I was about to say I'd be twenty. So I was at twenty four hours without food. Yeah. That's my nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably a lot. Yeah, no. But I would rather do that than have to diet for like a month. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so you, you would, um, to obviously keep around what you're, like you weigh now, 
are you do you track calories and stuff or you just kind of know how much you can kind of eat to kind of stay roughly where you are uh like i'll track my protein yeah like in my head <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. Um, but I'll, yeah no i'll not really do anything else i know yeah. when i've e- eaten like shit yeah, for sure or, or when i'm not eating enough like yeah you can the, feel but, it nah, I, can't, I just try and avoid that to be honest um, yeah i try a uh, I'm lucky enough to like train a lot of people that have had or have uh, eating disorders as well. Yeah, okay. Um, so it's it's actually good like working with them because you like I've got an insight of what uh, might trigger what me. they're feeling. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah, sure. what they're feeling, and you know we can come together and decide on what's best. Um, so yeah, tracking's not always. Nah. Well, I yeah, I try that once. I hate it. Um. That's like my night, my nightmare. As as you say, as we can tell when we spoke, you're like, we we're like, do we have any? There's no real structure to the to the chat. It's just kind of because the, the thought of like writing, like jotting things down and like being precise is just my nightmare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, no, no. It's very time consuming. <laughs> it's so tight. Ta- yeah, I tried it for about two days. I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't be seeing this. My clients will watch this, and I'm like, oh, oh, yeah. you have to track. tracking's great. <laughs> obviously it's useful but to be honest even if it's uh even if they do it like what i what i feel tracking at least gives you a little bit of a perspective on what foods and what kind of foods give you even if you do it for a week or whatever it gives you a perspective on how much protein you're eating how much and what what different food like sometimes people will like um come and come in and be like oh yeah well what did you have do you have much protein and they they won't have the kind of any inkling of how much protein they're eating and how or how much like carbs they're eating. They're, it's always carbs that they had so much of, and they're like, "Oh, I didn't realize that." But when they start tracking, they're like, "I'm eating so much carbs." They're like, "Yeah, that happens really quick." <laughs> I first did to my clients to start tracking the other week, and they came into their next session. They're like, "I understand now <laughs> why I put on weight." I'm like, "Yeah." <laughs> I was like, so, like, yeah, I always say it's a tool. Like, use it for a while. Mm. And then the idea is you then you then take it away because then you know what a portion of rice sure. looks like or you know what a portion of chicken looks like. Like, yeah. you don't need to meticulously measure stuff. stuff nah. And I feel, and, and I, I do like the, the the thing of maybe just, tra- or not, not even, you don't have to track it, but just in your head, you can kind of like just making sure you get enough protein would be, especially if you're, obviously powerlifting or weight training just knowing that you know you need a, like a quite a lot of protein to um kind of you know repair the muscles and all that sort of thing so i like this so you tell someone like how much protein they need they're like that can't be right <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it it's crazy yeah and an and the easy yeah i think i feel like the like an easy way to kind of um get your proteins is just try and have it for every meal so if you're yeah, breakfast, lunch, dinner, have a protein with that, and you you almost be there. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Instead of, like, because I'll sometimes tell someone, like, right, you need to have 120 grams, and, like, that's so much. And I'm like, we we'll split it into 30s, and then it's so much more manageable, and it's probably already done. Yeah, exactly. I have it in chunks. So like, you're not going to sit and eat 120 grams of <laughs> yeah. protein from chicken. I'd be impressed, but it's not. <laughs> um, sure. But yeah, I think I think that's where people just struggle in general. There's like, there is like too much options and food. Oh, so much. And then there's so much different information, like on Instagram or TikTok mm-hmm. or whatever platforms you're on, and people just don't know. Like, yeah, for they sure. Think, like fasting's better. They think like eating no carbs is better. They think eating rice cakes is going to make them really thin uh, they just end up like thinking about fats yeah it's it's that um i feel like with with that it's kind of the how how can i do this the fastest way you know what i mean it's not it's, they're not thinking long term they're thinking i want to lose t- 10 kilos in three days <laughs> maybe that's that's an exaggeration but you know what i mean they want it they <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, but I, f- yeah, I think that's what I try. I don't do that much per- personal training anymore. Um, but when I when I was doing it, I um, it was you know we want to, like we want to be obviously want 
want to look good and that sort of stuff, but it's it's a lifetime thing. We don't we don't want to be in there for we don't want to be in the gym for three months, absolutely annihilate ourselves, and then don't go back to the gym for two years. It's you know what I mean. So it's if we can get someone going to the gym once or, or not, not even to the gym, just doing being active once or twice a week, it's a win. Yeah. Um, well, it's the best, like the best shape I've probably been in is when I didn't actually care about food or tracking or any yeah. of that stuff, and yeah, just moved, and that was actually like towards the end of lockdown. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So much conditioning, and I was just eating well because I was in the house all the time, and that like that was the the best shape I've been in when I just wasn't paying attention to what other people were doing. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, uh, well, it's not as easy as just getting people to move, but that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a start, isn't it? I mean, it's nicer weather where you are, though. Hodge. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't think. I'm trying I'd... to get people to walk right now is a struggle. <laughs> My Melbourne's been terrible. We're in the middle of November, like all, all yeah, like almost at. So we're in spring. I reckon it's rained the last forty days on the trot. Oh, it's been terrible. We're in some sort of weird. I don't. Everyone talks about it. it's called like El Nina or El Nino. I don't really know. It's some sort of weird cold front off South Africa or something, and we're copping it this year. I so. said we were getting that too. We had like thunderstorms today. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, maybe we'll. I think we'll touch on your kind of what your goals are for your business uh, in just a little bit. But for um, what who do you kind of um, do you do you have role models or who have you kind of looked up to or who have you learnt from to kind of you know like to get to where you are today with your training and your coaching and that sort of thing? Um, so my my first PT I had, yep, um, was yeah, it was a great role model for me. Um, like he let, I just told him I wanted to lift heavy stuff. <laughs> and that's what we did <laughs> literally <laughs> um but yeah he was just very motivating like always had my back yeah um and just always knew what to say um I, i've always or i always say this but i've always been lucky to work with great pcs yeah um so like all the girls i used to work with back home like a lot of them are into crossfit um so like <laughs> definitely not my forte uh, yeah. but that, that, like just watching them exercise is really impressive so I feel like that's always motivating um, and still keep in touch with them, see their stuff on Instagram all the time, like just yeah. watching that enough to give you a bit of a kick up the arse I wouldn't say like I have anyone famous that's yeah. a role model yeah. there's more like people that have had some sort of like emotional effect on me yeah 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 um like left and wise i wouldn't struggle but motivation wise like i'm getting my head a lot so yeah. anyone that sort of understands me can like <laughs> list that it's great yeah <laughs> um yeah and yeah everyone that i work in work with in here as well um everyone's just always got your back yeah for sure that's good um, um it's just it's just good to have like yourself surrounded by people that just support you like no matter like they don't know what i'm doing and equally one of the guys does athletics i don't know what he's doing like totally polar opposite things but either way he's still got my back up so yeah uh, okay. it's just nice to have a good support network yeah for sure well and this one i guess that that's awesome and i guess this question kind of um it's a similar one, but if you could train with three people, who would they be? Usually I say five, but three I think might be better. <laughs> oh, five. <laughs> we'll cut people out. <laughs> oh. Anyone, it could be anyone in the world. can be athletes. Anyone that I know ever. Uh, do you know who I would train with? Usain Bolt. <laughs> yeah, that's... Well, he's a monster. I used to I used to watch his training. They used to do um pool workouts. I used to watch him. Yeah, and they'd be I don't know if he'd, he'd be like doing like plyometrics in pools and he was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's uh, good. His, his book's great and film's great if you've not watched. I'm yeah, I have, haven't seen it. Very good. Um yeah, the guy the guy in here that I work with has been like trained by Usain Bolt before. 
<laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah and I'm like, technically, I've met a famous person because I've met you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. I'm pretty sure. That's how it works. <laughs> definitely have. Uh, so we got one. Dan- Usain Bolt. Daniel and Bailey, probably. Who oh, was I've it? Gone- Dan Bailey. Yeah. The CrossFitter. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, Bodybuilder. Body oh, D- Dan Bailey. I'll have to have. I'll have to look him up. Do you know who they are? Oh, yeah. Well, there's a da- there's a Dan Bailey CrossFitter. I know him, but I'm not sure about the the bodybuilder. Uh, no, it's a woman. Woman. Oh, yeah. Nah. Okay. I'll have to. I'll yeah, have to look her up. Uh, yeah, she's American. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You'll you'll know when you see her. Um, <laughs> that's funny. I've not actually picked any powerlifters. That's two. <laughs> and probably Brooke Wells. You know who Brooke Wells is? She's a CrossFitter. Yeah. Yeah, she has a crossfire. That's the one. Yeah, I've got, I've got. Looks fucking great. <laughs> she's crazy. All they're all, all those crossfitters. They're just crazy. They're just. Oh, yeah. But, have to be. Yeah, <laughs> they're like like crazy good for anyone listening. Not not like yeah. bad. It's just the the amount of training they do, and it's just I, I quite enjoy. Um, me and my mate who used to have a uh, gym with, we used to love it. So we used to do that sort of stuff. Some of that sort of stuff, but just the um. Just like their training and the stuff they do, they're just so. I think they they do a lot of different modalities. So they you know they they're fast, they they're strong, they they're athletic. They yeah, you know, it's quite a cool. If if someone want, if you want to touch kind of all the different so, sides of kind of training, it's not a bad way to start. To be honest, um, people don't like the. Is it Brit, What's it called? Brit Shen? Is that what it's called? It's on YouTube. And they get um a crossfitter, a powerlifter, an Olympic lifter, oh, and a bodybuilder. Yeah, okay. They so they all compete in each other's sports. Yeah, okay. Uh, like, uh, yeah, it's it's great. Uh, like they all get really competitive, obviously, because they're all sports people. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the crossfitter usually comes out top. Yeah. But, like yeah. no one can beat them. They've trained in uh, Yeah, it's impressive to watch. I don't think I'd be very good at it, but I love like sitting and watching people do it. <laughs> my mobility doesn't let me get my arms out. I can't, so I can't yeah, do that. <laughs> same, anything like front rat, I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get the straps. Um, well, that's awesome. Yeah, that was good. That was a good three. That's a good three. I feel like that'd be a fun training session. Uh, with uh, Usain Bolt, Dan Bailey, and uh, Brooke Wells. <laughs> and I, then- I don't think I've returned. <laughs> <laughs> um, and i guess just to kind of finish off before we kind of um finish off where or where, like what are you what are your plans for your kind of business your coaching um do you just see yourself kind of do, doing similar stuff or have you got plans to kind of i don't know do your own stuff like, yeah, where, where's where you at with that sort of thing um so gonna continue PTM. um yeah. So continue with clients like here, personal one ones, um, and online. Um, but hopefully, if my assistant manager gets the manager job here, I'm going to apply to be assistant manager. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I've always looked for like a next thing. Um. Well, if, like where I used to live, it would have been good to get your own studio. And yeah. people tended to thrive a lot on that. But in the like I'm in a, a town now whereas I was in a big city before. Yeah. Um so I feel like here that just wouldn't really work. Yeah, for sure. Um and then if I decide to move back home then that also wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I think this is like a quite nice career path for me because I can do both as well. Yeah. And if I'm in here more if I get obviously if I get the manager job, yeah, um, then yeah, more people will see me as well. So yeah, it'll be good good for business both ways. For sure. Um, that's sort of my next. That's yeah. That's the plan. Three months plan. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look too far out to the horizon, do we? <laughs> <laughs> I always say like take it hour by hour. Yeah, <laughs> one hour at a time. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then I guess the the last question that I always ask someone, I probably should have um, let you know beforehand before we started, but 
Uh, I got this every time I, I shout out the the boys from uh, All The Smoke. It's a podcast, two basketball guys. That Anyway, um, they always ask this at the end of a, a podcast session just because when you're kind of starting a podcast, it's hard to get people on. Um, so I always ask the guests, who do you think would be good for the podcast for this one? But wh- whoever you say, you have to try get them on for me. <laughs> well, if you can get him on. <laughs> so yeah, do, yeah, so anyone who does, you know, fitness, business related stuff, um, that's all we're kind of looking for, just chatting to people. So who uh, I think my friends back home would be great, to be honest. Um yeah. so my friend Carla and her boyfriend own a studio in Glasgow. Yeah. Um and they've just recently opened that well, recently it's been <laughs> more than recent in the past year. Yeah. Um, so they're just building that as they go and learning more about business. Um, so that that might be a quite interesting chat, and they're they're great. So they they're a couple. Um, yeah. That's her and my friend. Um, I Perfect. think they probably live, eat, and breathe <laughs> business by now. Yeah, sweet. Um, but yeah, they've got a nice little studio in Glasgow, and it yeah, it looks great. Um, I think they're doing pretty well. Um, so yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I can send you, send you their information. Yeah, shoot me their information. Let me know. Let. Yeah, I think they'd actually really enjoy to do it. Um, and yeah. yeah, get get an insight more into Scottish people. <laughs> yeah, I know. Get that accent. Get that accent going. I'm, I'm sitting here just trying to live. Um, but yeah, that's perfect because that's that's kind of what look. Yeah, just pe- that's exactly what we're looking for. You know, people are doing their own, like doing fitness business, starting their own stuff, running like coaching, powerlifting all that sort of thing. So that's, that's perfect. So thank you. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, thanks so much for your time. Uh, good you. luck moving forward with your, with your career and your powerlifting comp in April. And thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you on the next episode. Yeah.